How's it going, Mr. David? Jimmy Chong, good day in the cafeteria. Is that good or bad? Ask me tomorrow. Aha, we have a quorum. Please, my boy, make yourself comfortable. Oh, Mr. David, we're gonna need another. Okay. I'll stand. We need to talk about Ainsley. Your father and I have discussed it, and we think it's time to tell her the truth about Nicholas Endicott. Specifically, that she killed him. That's a bad idea. She's suffering from PTSD. Learning the full story will only make it worse. Not if we tell her as a family. That way we control the narrative. Of course. It's about control. Ugh, fine. Uh, guide, steer, lightly judge the narrative. Doesn't it worry you? What will happen if she figures things out on her own? Of course I'm worried. Discovering that you've been lied to about something as seismic as murder could lead to wild, erratic behavior. You really think she wants to know that? I wish I didn't know. I wish I didn't know you were a killer. Well, I wish you had just gone to the police in the first place instead of all this lying. Yes, historically, you love going to the cops at the first sign of mischief. She slit a man's throat in cold blood. I had to protect my sister. Okay, okay, so you needed to lie a little bit. Why not say self-defense? Our lawyers could have run with that. Oh, no, no, Jesse. Nobody likes a Monday morning accomplice. Maybe you're right. Maybe I handled this all wrong from the start. Or, counterpoint, maybe you handled it wrong when you dropped a dime on dear old dad. I'm just saying, if he's fine with murder cover-ups, I could have done with a little of that energy back in 98. Enough, Martin. Thank you for protecting your sister. You were put in an impossible situation. Ainsley deserves to know the truth.